Hi, my name is Kathy Buzzard Webb, and I'm an interdisciplinary artist, and I'm thrilled to be at Azul. And I'd like to introduce the pieces that I've done at Azul. Uh, the first one is aggression. So this is, um, all of these are found objects, things that I brought with me and things that I found at Azul. And so uh, this is found objects and polymer clay and India ink. And it's, um, it's actually about male aggression. And this is a chicken. It's a male chicken, and that's the penis. And you can see the sperm, and he's killing America with aggression. And because I haven't heard of very many mass shooters who are women, and right here, that's the, the woman who gave birth to a child, but he also is a male child, and he's also aggressive. And then, not to say that I'm a man hater, I'm not at all. I just think that there's a correlation here. And he's thinking. And then this is a gun and is also killing our, our country. It's an eagle, American eagle, eagle, the symbol of the United States. And you can see the ram over here. And so I found this picture frame in Texas, this in the picture, and I decided to keep it as it was. And I kind of etched um, and in to, to give it, I don't know, to change it a bit. And this was broken off and this part and so instead of discarding it, it it became part of the art because that's what i've learned as an artist is to see the mistakes and and have them um, be be part of the art and actually make the art better and so this second piece is called extincting and uh, some of these are pieces that i found at azul and uh, some of these are um, I brought with me, but they all have eyes. These are all animals, and it's how um, by overhunting and overfishing, we're making a lot of, um, uh, and uh, like snorkeling, this is kind of supposed to represent, you know, a sea animal um, in places where we're not supposed to be and so forth, and touching the coral, how that kind of messes up the environment. And these are all different eggs and uh, this is again um, found objects and acrylic paint and polymer clay and then this one is called miss mrs sierke gives birth to, the, to them while dusting so she gives birth to uh, just one egg but them i did it to be non-binary because this you know this person later in life can decide to be male or female and um, this is Mrs. Sierke right here. And I found this um, cloth. It was actually a child's um, um, three month old romper. And it's terry cloth. And I found that at Beacon of Hope in Marshall, Texas at that thrift store. And this is uh, Sierke in Hungarian means uh, chicken. And I use translanguaging in my art and my titles and so forth to um, represent my Hungarian identity because I'm Hungarian American. My mom um, came to the, to the United States when she was 19 years old. And so the diamond represents the female uh, uterus. And again, this is um, acrylic paint. I mean, I don't think I used acrylic. No, this is found objects and um, polymer clay and I bake the polymer clay. Um, and these are from Dominique chickens. So I was getting eggs from uh, a person in Brownsville, Texas, who actually lived inside of the city and had chickens and he had Dominique chickens and he gave me some of the, some of the feathers. And I'm a vegetarian. I don't know if you can see it in my art and I'm trying to become vegan but it's just very hard where we live. Um, I live right beside Mexico and there's, it's just really hard to find healthy vegan food there and, you know, to get enough protein and, and vitamins and so forth. But um, I, I don't eat eggs very, very much anymore. And then this next one um, is called Mrs. Sierke's Birth. Um, exit, um, um, entails but two paths and this is burlap and my painting professor Gina Palacios shout out to Gina um, 
gave me the burlap um, a few days before we left um, um, for this trip here. And uh, so this is burlap paint, I mean burlap, and this is acrylic paint. And you can see Mrs. Sierke here in the mountains in the background. I'm just inspired by the mountains here in the Smokies. And then this is again the represent, representation of the female chicken. But these are drumsticks, and the other one was a drumstick as well. And then the, the uterus, and you can interpret these to be eyes or breast. And so this is uh, a young chick deciding her two paths in life, um, either reproduction, um, she doesn't have very many choices, or being a McDonald's nugget. <laughs> and this next piece is called Mrs. Sierke Cleans. Um, oh, Mrs. Sierke learns to read and write while encaged. And this is not completed yet. And I think I'll, I'll keep all of these little marks here, you know, from the... Uh, from the iron, but it needs to it needs to um, have a um, um, some sort of you know glass or the, the, I don't know what the, the the fake glass is plexiglass on top of it. And so these are uh, chicken scratches. My mom would all always say chicken scratches when she was describing the umlaut. And so I put the chicken scratches here and um, I have to tidy it up. It's not complete yet. And she's reading a book about nuggets and that's McDonald's. And she's asked, she's questioning. So this is again, the chicken drumstick representation re represented um, as the chicken or vice versa. And so um, this has the ABCs around it, but I tried to distress it to make the um, viewer kind of work. <laughs> And find out what that is and that actually inspired the piece and these are three layers of fabric here the pink the red and then the um, other uh, fabric on the top the distressed but I need to come back in and work on this one and so um, the next piece is in, entitled and let it begin with me and so this is um, about gun violence, and um, this is a, supposed to be a, a pistol right here. And then these are um, innocent people who are killed from gun violence. And this little mouse looking thing um, is, you know, pleading for help and asking why. And um, I use the onions here, um, onion skins from Azul, they were, they were left here. And it was a wonderful opportunity. I've never used onion dye before. And so that's, um, these uh, white feathers were, were dyed with uh, onion. And this is from Azul as well. This is, um, this is uh, for like um, the yard. Um, it's some sort of, um, I don't know, felt that you put for landscaping. And inside of the Inside of the flower petals, I have little words of hope, and I started with um, I started with um, pen, but when I um, tried to um, uh, put glue on top, it, it ruined it, um, the words, and so I, I used pencil. Um, and so this is supposed to represent the peace sign. So um, that's a a song I learned when I was a child, let there be peace on earth and, and let it begin with me. And it's a reflection on how I want to be the change as an artist so badly. I want to try to improve our world and, and make it a more peaceful place. <laughs> because the, the gun violence, what happened in Buffalo, the racism, um, with the othering, what happened in, in um, in Texas recently, uh, in Uvalde, has really upset me as an artist. And I just, I wanna do something um, to, to, to try to help our world. And, um, oh, and if we go back to that one, so these are found objects um, and acrylic paint and polymer clay for all of the little uh, mice there. And then um, this one is the same fabric that I used in the other piece, the terry cloth, and it just it says just one year. So that's gonna be the title of the piece. And um, that's this is for a three month old. And this is from 
the baby lamb and I use the inside. So this is fabric and um, the materials are fabric and, um, and glue and also feathers. And I, I went in and with some acrylic paint and I also used cabbage. Um, I got the cabbage um, here in the area, the red cabbage, and um, I used the dye from that to make it kind of purple. And um, I'm not sure on the the what this is going to be yet. So this is Azul's property, and I just um, uh, I need to get a, a vessel kind of like this one that's distressed. And this is polymer clay, and that's supposed to represent uh, an, an innocent animal being killed, um, just so we can en enjoy meat. And then this next piece is. Um, and it's made out of leather that I found at the Beacon of Hope in Marshall, Texas. It's not complete yet because I'm a perfectionist with my art. And so I want to come back through and I'll put something here um, just to make it look nicer. Um, I don't know what it's going to be yet. Some sort of cloth or uh, found leather or something. So this did not look like it looks now. So I completely changed the purse and it was a... Um, this was also a cigar box. And um, so these are the different animals. And this is the products of the animals. You have bacon and you have the stuffed pig with the apple in his mouth. And if you kind of look at the camera that way, you can kind of see the, the you know, that it looks like an apple. And then this is sausage. So the bacon is there. And this is again, the same, I um, my mom um, was a refugee from Hungary to Germany and um, she didn't like to waste anything. And so I've incorporated that into my art practice. And also I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Honduras and I don't like to waste things because of my experience there in Honduras with the poverty. And so I use every single material. I, I don't throw it away. You can see that there's hardly anything in the trash can here that I've used. And again, this is the um, the onion dye, and so you have a chicken wing, you have an egg. Oh, and here in the corner, you have Mrs. Sierke, the drumstick, and then you have the, 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 the male and the, the female. And I made the male um, bigger because it's uh, usually dom it, it is dominant, even in the natural world. And I know that they are not in... Um, in the correct uh, sizes, the scales are off, and that's totally on purpose. And um, so this is a, a, a male, and then that's supposed to be a female, and these are the different um, products from the meat, and you have the, this is made from, I made this yesterday out of polymer clay. This is a found object, and I just painted it, and then I used um, Posca markers, and then this is a beef, um, beef bone. And then this is this uh, oh, um, that uh, landscaping felt. And so I think that's about it for that one. And I don't have a title yet. Um, so I'm just, it's, it's brand new. And you can see the cigar box on the back. I found these at a garage sale for 25 cents in Texas where I live. And um, the person who had the garage sale as a physics professor at a high school where I used to teach in Texas, so kind of funny. Uh, and then this is uh, the next piece. This is my most recent one is uh, from paper. I made a couple of pieces I made um, at home before I left, but most of them I made at Azul. Even when it was raining, I was working outside and I dried them and you have to keep changing the, uh, the uh, cloth so that they don't get, get molded because it's been really rainy here. And so the whole concept is I'm going to have one more layer and it'll be red and it'll be screwed on. So I'll screw this on the back and I want, I'll have a, a sign and this will be a, a big podium and uh, instructing people to lift it up and they could put it down and then I'm, it's not going to be this paper. I want it to be really beautiful paper and I want it to be red also. And I'll use white uh, Posca markers. 
and I'll, um, I have, um, kind of like a poem in here, but it's really, the poem is about the materials I used and where they came from. And so the whole idea is to, you know, lift it up and to see something really beautiful underneath. And that's it. And so um, I wanted to take this opportunity and show you my messy workspace. And I found this in, um, it wasn't Marsh, it wasn't Marsh, yeah, actually it was Marshall. Um, I think this is a turkey feather and I de-liced it completely. Uh, when I got it, I, I put it in a plastic bag with um, a disinfectant and I brought lice, um, um, lice uh, shampoo and stuff like that. So I, and then I put it out in the sun and, and so forth. But I don't think I can sell a piece with wild turkey feather in the United States. I think it's against the law. Um, if it's from um, a bird that originated outside of the Americas, I can sell it. But, um, but I still want to keep it as good luck. I think it's really beautiful. And so these are some of the materials I found at Azul. Some of the materials I brought with me. Um, I just uh, try to get inspired by um, my surroundings and create art from them. And this is very, uh, this is the Sculpty, uh, Sculpey clay. It's hard to say. This is polymer clay and you, you bake it and you can mold almost any object into it. And I have like uh, basic colors, but I can mix you know, um, the colors together. And so this is how I, I created a lot of my artwork. These are the feathers that I used. I, I soaked in onion dye. Um, and all you do is boil the onions, on, onion skin with none of the pulpy stuff. And these are materials, these are um, frames and other things that I found um, at thrift stores and I brought with me um, uh, you know, and I, I, I study the area around me and I, um, and I look at these materials and I see how I can um, incorporate them into my art. Uh, the sander I used for the, the last paper piece, uh, it doesn't have the Velcro on it. And I got this in Asheville and it's, it's wonderful. My uh, sculpture professor, shout out to Tim Goncharoff. Uh, recommended Milwaukee tools and so I bought uh, in honor of him I bought the Milwaukee sander plus it was on sale and um, this really nice lady from uh, uh, Azul she's the president she gave me some sheets and some really wonderful um, um, jean old jean um, shirts that I can work with so I'm going to use those and this is a box I have with glues and acrylics and um, th things to help me create uh, to help me create uh, rust. My handy Dremel. I can't li live without my Dremel as an artist. Uh, so when I said at the beginning that I'm interdisciplinary, uh, that means that I use a multiple. Uh, I use a lot of different media to create my art and. Um, I also try to incorporate smells and, um, and sounds in my art. You don't see it here, but I have um, a motion detector uh, that I messed with and I have um, like a cow, a cow sound and I had to work with it um, to make it not so uh, loud and I had to research the specific type of foam to use because the sound waves can get very hot and it can start a fire. And um, these are some of the, oh yeah, this is that, that white purse. See, you can see that I still will use that. I don't throw it away. And then this was the one seed that I bought at the Beacon of Hope and um, material that I have. And if you kind of swing around, you can see, or I can just show you this way. I This is my favorite, um, uh, paper that I've made and I was just experimenting and that's uh, that's burlap and I think that's really successful and I know a lot of people can you know decide to use wh whichever side but this is my favorite side 
And then um, you can see some other paper I made. And this is, um, this is with um, turmeric. And this is a feather here. And I also use my hair. Oh, I forgot to mention that my hair and my partner's hair is in, is, is in this as well. And uh, so yeah, that's, that's the paper I make and I want it to be uh, round. I am more feminine and I do have the rectangular, um, rectangular, um, I can't even remember the names, um, the mold and, and the Dremel, uh, not the Dremel, the decal, the mold and the decal. But I think I'm gonna stay with the uh, round ones. And these are just uh, things I'm using. It's really hard when you go on a re to a residency to know what to bring if you're interdisciplinary. If you're a painter, it's so easy. <laughs> you can just you know bring your your paints and your easels and and your and your canvases and you're all set. But for someone who's interdisciplinary, it's super super difficult. So um, I actually this will, a lot of this stuff is for ceramics but I use it for other things. And uh, some metal smithing tools. Uh, I had to buy this, uh, you know, to cut wire for my rusting that I do. And then uh, paint brushes, India ink, thread, my Posca markers, uh, and, and um, um, I use this all the time. Uh, the, the tape and, and so forth. And then these are the things down here that I'm gonna be putting in the car because I'm leaving on Wednesday. And these are the things that I definitely won't be using. Um, and I forgot to mention the rust process. So if we can swing back here, this one was created with, uh, with rust. And um, it also, so you can see the rust here, and this leads me to what I decided um, to do with my art. Um, so I was I, I was focused on um, ab abuse and food because I was sexually molested when I was a little girl, um, and my art helped me to completely my art making helped me to completely heal from that experience. I focused on food and, and consumption, food and health, food and gender, and so forth. And so you can see that food and gender stuff with that Mrs. Sierke. Um, and I forgot to explain in this piece here, you can see the cross. And um, I'm a Christian, but I think that Christians and other people have really um kind of misshaped the whole idea about humans having dominion over animals and um i think that a lot of people see uh eating meat and as carte blanche and they don't care how the animal was treated and i don't think that um, god wanted us to mistreat animals and have them in very small cages and um have them treated as as they're treated now but so my art practice now is um, consists of rusting things, dyeing things, and letting that process come through and looking at the patterns that I see and trying to create art um, from, from those um, things that I see. So I, I do that in, in nature, but this is going to be less controlled. And I, I think as an artist, I, and as a human being, I've had an issue with fear and control. And I'm just trying to let that go and let the peace, let the natural patterns that fall inform my art. Thank you.